and welcome to Bentley House Kits. If you are watching this video, you have most likely or are thinking about purchasing the Retro Stove Kit from Bentley House Minis. In this kit, you will receive three and a half matte board sheets that have been laser cut. These are gonna have all the pieces you need to put together your stove. You will also receive one card stock sheet that has also been cut with detail pieces you will need to complete the entire project. To begin, you want to start cutting out the pieces from sheet one that have the letter C marked on them. To release the pieces from the sheet, you wanna use a sharp craft knife and cut through the tabs that hold the pieces into the sheet. You wanna then locate your cotton swab from your accessories bag and clean off the sides of the pieces. To begin, we are going to glue both of the C pieces together to create a double thickness. I'm making sure that I cover the entire piece with glue, put the other matching piece on top, and line up the edges. Once that's done, I'm going to place something heavy on top or I'm going to use clamps. We're going to do the same thing for both pieces marked B. I'm going to add glue put the matching piece on top, making sure that my edges match up. For this piece, I'm going to use clamps to make sure that I clamp it and it stays in place while it dries. If any of your pieces end up moving while drying, this could cause your kit not to go together quite right. Now I'm going to use A, the pieces we put together marked B, and the pieces we put together marked C, and we're going to start with putting glue on the bottom of B. B is going to be glued to the left side of A all the way back in the corner. So you will have a 16th inch gap you will see at the front of A, and that's okay because another piece needs to go there later. Now we're going to add glue to the left side of C and to the bottom. This is going to be glued on top of piece A and against piece B. The notch that's on the left side of piece C should fit perfectly on top of B so that it kind of overlaps on top of B. This is what it should look like once those three pieces are put together. Let that dry. Now we're going to work with two pieces marked D and two pieces marked DB. Lay them out like you see on the screen. We are going to be gluing DB on top of the correlating D so that the engraved letter D is hidden once it's glued down. You wanna make sure that you can still see the engraved lines and all the smaller engraved letters once everything's glued together. I'm gonna to do this for both sides. Now that I have that done, I'm going to locate and remove four pieces marked E. They are exactly all the same. And then two smaller pieces that are marked EE. -E. You wanna leave the other two pieces in the mat board for use later down the line. Grab one of your pieces marked DB, doesn't matter which one, I'm going to be using this one. And what we wanna do is match up all these pieces with the engraved letter. Each piece is going to be glued on its side just underneath the engraved line. I'm starting with one of the E pieces and I'm going to glue it just underneath the engraved line that has the engraved letter E just underneath it. It should match exactly from back to front with DB so that there is no overhang on either side. I'm going to continue doing this going down. The next line has EE -E engraved, and so I'm grabbing one of the smaller pieces, adding glue to the side, and just I'm centering it on that line that is engraved. All of these pieces are installed the exact same way. Make sure you are installing them just under the engraved line because this will make sure later on it lines up with the stove openings. This is how your first piece should look. Try to make sure your pieces are as perpendicular as possible so that everything lines up down the road. We will also need to install the other EE piece to DB. So now this is how all your pieces will look and now it's time to put it all together. In order to do this, I am going to add glue to the exposed sides of the EE pieces and then connect it to the other DB space. 
This also has engraved lines, so I know where all of these pieces should hit, and they too should fit perfectly inside of the DB boundaries and not have any pieces that are extending too far to the front or too far to the back. Now we have our completed DB piece, and this is what's going to create the oven on the right side of the completed stove. Now we can grab the first piece we put together and put the DB piece onto it. I want to first dry fit it so I make sure that it fits as well as possible and I don't have any problems with any overhangs that shouldn't be there. It should fit right in the corner and up against the most right side. I'm going to add glue to all the pieces that are going to be touching and then slowly and carefully glue it into the ABC constructed piece. This is how it should look once both those pieces are put together. Now I'm going to grab pieces F, double A, and double B. F is inserted into the piece like this so that we have the engraved line laying horizontally and it should be flush with the front of the DB piece. I'm going to go ahead and glue that in, making sure I put glue all over the back and I'm even going to clamp it so that it's as flush against the side as possible. Now I'm going to use the double A piece and this is going to be centered. It's kind of a spacer to make sure that you get the next piece in correctly. It doesn't have to be in the exact center of the opening space, but I'll show you just eyeball it to try and get it in the best you can in the center of the A opening. And um, it's just going to be something to support the double B piece that's about to go in to the stove. Add glue to the bottom and the back of this piece so that it is as sturdy as possible. Now you can add glue to the piece marked with double B. I'm putting it upside down so that the engraved letters will be hidden once it's glued in. This will be the opening of our stove. I'm checking to make sure that the sides line up with the engraved lines on both piece F and B, and it does. That'll help me keep it straight once I put the piece in. I added glue to the top of double A, and now I'm adding glue to the sides and the back of double B, so that once I get it inserted and I'm happy with how it's sitting inside the stove, it will glue and adhere around all sides. This is how it should look once it's inserted. So double A is just supporting the double B piece. Now we need double C's, there's two of those, double D, two of the double E pieces, and piece G. G actually has an inside piece that you need to cut out. So if you wanna place an X on that piece so you don't think it's something you might need for later, you can do that but just go ahead and use a craft knife, remove that inner piece, and even though the letter's not on it anymore, this is piece G that we need. I am going to sand lightly the side of piece G, and this is because I do want it to be slightly rounded, and once it's glued onto the stove, it will be difficult to sand that side of piece G. So I am pre-sanding it. This is optional. If you don't want rounded edges and you want everything square and sharp, you don't have to sand. I am turning it over now to the back, and if you didn't do the sanding, it doesn't matter which side is the back, but I turned it over, I wrote back, so I knew that that was the back of piece G. Before we put anything else together, we need to add double E onto the double C pieces. And so I am adding glue to the side and gluing them just underneath the engraved lines on both double C pieces. The double C pieces need to be glued to the back of G on either side of the opening. I'm going to add glue just to one side and then carefully glue it so that it is on the very edge of piece G and at a perpendicular angle going straight back. Do this for both sides, making sure that you have the letters CC on the upper part so that you know that your lines will match up. I'm now going to glue the piece double D on top of both CC pieces, and this is going to be glued on the side that has the weird shaped notch. 
and I will show this to you a little closer once it's all glued together but basically this is creating the interior of the oven so you've just created the walls and the ceiling for the interior of the oven and that weird shaped notch needs to be at the top of the oven opening so this is how it looks and if it's put together correctly it should slide right into this piece and you can line up the edge of piece G with the leftmost side so it should be flush on this side and over here you should be able to line it up flush with piece F and you should still be able to see the edges of D and DB. Those are going to have another piece on top of it so make sure those are looking correct and then you can add glue. I always like to dry fit everything before I add glue to make sure it's all working. Once you have the glue on there carefully insert it make sure everything's lining up correctly and then you can let that piece dry. This is how it should look once all those pieces are put together. Now from our accessories bag we need to pull out this which is actually four pin nails put together. You can use some wire cutters to cut the very loose connection between the nails. You want to put the other three back in your accessory bag and just hold on to one of the pin nails. This is what's going to fit in the opening of piece G. To install it you can either use tacky glue or super glue and I'm going to put glue in that weird shaped opening and then put the pin nail in the opening allowing it to dry completely. This is how it should look once inserted in the notch. Now we are going to paint the inside of the stove because it is much easier to paint the inside at this point as opposed to later on once the fronts of the stove are added. I'm using a light gray, but of course you can use any color you want for the interior of your stove. I'm going to paint all the openings that you see here. Now we're going to move on to pieces H and I. These also have interior pieces that need to be removed, but before doing that I'm going to dry fit H just so you can see why we still needed to see the fronts of D and DB because H fits on the front of those. Again, if I want to curve the interior edge of H, I need to sand it now before gluing it in place. I sanded it before I removed the interior pieces because it was a little bit easier for me to hold on to. But now that it's sanded, I can remove those inside pieces. Again, you can mark an X if you're afraid you won't remember that those pieces you don't need anymore. But once you have them cut out, you can glue H onto the front of the stove. It should line up perfectly with the edges of D and DB. When you're installing this, make sure your largest opening is at the top and those weird shape jut outs that are for the pin nails are also at the top. That's very important. Now you want to add glue anywhere the pieces will touch and glue H to the front of your stove. Here is the place where I told you I wanted it sanded and rounded slightly and so of course that is your choice if you want to do that. I is a little bit different than H because the weird shaped notch needs to be uh, at the bottom instead of at the top and that's due to the way that the door opens. So when I glue it on it needs to be above H and just kind of butt up against the top of H and that weird shaped notch needs to be at the bottom of the opening. Here's how it should look once both H and I have been installed. Once they have been installed and are dry, you can go back and sand down the little lip that's created by piece H when it hits piece I. If you like it there, you can leave it, but it's at this point I do a little sanding on different pieces I think will be harder to reach later on because I do want my edges to just be slightly rounded. Now I'm going to separate and install those other three pin nails that need to be put into the stove openings. They should fit perfectly into those weird notches, two in piece H and one in piece I, as you can see here. Now we're going to work on the stove top, which consists of O, two pieces marked P, one Q, an R, and piece S that has all the holes in it. 
O is pretty easy to install. It should just fit on top of this space right here, on top of G, B, and F. And we can go ahead and glue that one in right away, making sure that all the pieces that touch have glue so that they can hold tight. Now I'm going to take the two pieces marked P and glue them together so that the engraved letters are hidden once they're glued together. I'm going to clamp that while it dries so that I know it will stay together and I will put that aside for later. While that dries, I can cut out the circle openings in piece R. These are for the burners later on. Piece Q fits in like this, where the back of it butts up against piece D, and it sits on top of piece O. This creates a spacer for the stovetop. I'm going to glue that in, and before I move on, I want to go ahead and paint the interior part of this stovetop because you will be able to see into it from the burners, and so going ahead and painting it will make your job a little easier down the road. Now I'm going to take the piece I previously glued together from two pieces marked P. I'm going to add glue on one side and I'm going to glue it on all the way against the very back of the stove. It should fit the entire length of piece O from the back to the front. I'm going to let that dry and remove any extra glue. Once that's secure, I can go ahead and add piece R, and it should fit firmly on top of piece Q, which is against the side, and pieces P that we just installed. I'm adding glue to all the areas that are going to touch, and then I can glue that piece onto the stove. Once that's glued on, I have the start to my stove top and I can go ahead and grab piece S. S should fit right underneath piece R and it should be on the front of all the other pieces we previously installed. This should basically close off the entire stove top box. So if you have any gaps you might need to go back and figure out what went wrong, but everything should be closed up and finished for the stovetop. Now we're going to use pieces L, double G, K, J, N, and M. Starting with double G, we are going to be putting this piece in a place you won't see, but will help with our doors opening later on. Add glue to the very edge of GG and it is going to be glued to the back of the opening of piece I. You want to glue it just inside the opening, not all the way at the top of piece I, so that there is still like a 16th inch amount of space at the top of piece I because that's where we need to install piece L. Piece L fits on top just like this. You have to flip it over so that the engraved letter L is hidden once it's glued. I'm adding glue to GG and all the areas that are going to end up touching. And then I'm installing piece L like so. If you're worried about not getting GG in the correct spot, you can try installing L first and then glue G up underneath L once it's installed. Now we're going to move on to J and K. You need to remove the center of K and then glue it on top of J so that the engraved letter J is hidden once it's put together. I do suggest adding something heavy on top of this once it's glued so you make sure that it does not warp or bend before installing it onto your stove. Once it's dry, it's easy to install. You put it up underneath piece L and against the side of pieces C. Dry fit it to make sure that it looks good and then glue it in so that all the pieces touching have glue. Once you have it installed, I highly suggest looking at it from all angles, making sure you get rid of any excess glue and that you are completely happy with it before it dries in place. 
Now we're going to install piece N, which is an optional piece. It is an accessory shelf which goes above the stove top. I'm using tweezers here to hold on to it, makes it a little bit easier, but I'm going to glue it just underneath the engraved line against the back of the stove wall. This is how it looks once it's installed. Finally, we're going to attach piece M. I'm going to turn it backwards so that I can no longer see the engraved letter. This piece sits on the front of JK, goes across the front of L, and butts up against the side of piece I. I'm going to dry fit it and then add glue to all the pieces where it is going to touch, and then install it so that it is as straight as possible. Again, once you get it glued on, I highly suggest holding it back, making sure it is sitting the way you like it before the glue fully takes hold. Once you're happy with it, let the entire thing sit and dry for a while. Once it's dry, you can do an initial sand, and this is going to help take away any overhangs, any pieces that aren't sitting perfectly. When you're sanding mat board, I highly suggest you sand away from the edge. If you sand towards the edge, it could possibly pull up the paper at the end. So just be very careful with how you sand the mat board. You can also use the cotton swab provided in your kit to remove some of the dust created from sanding. Now we're going to create the drawer, which consists of double H, double I, two pieces marked double J, and U. This is going to make the drawer that goes in the bottom right hand corner. We're going to start with double H and double I, add glue to the bottom of double I, and glue it to the top back of double H. These two pieces create the back and the bottom of your drawer. Once those are put together, you can grab the pieces marked double J. These are going to be the sides of your drawer. The smaller side of double J should line up with the back of II. Make sure to dry fit it, and once you like how it fits, add glue and glue it into your drawer construction. You're going to do this for both pieces marked JJ on both sides of your drawer. Once that's done, you can, if you would like, round the edges of U. I like my doors to have a little bit of rounding on the edges. To do this, I'm just slightly moving my mat board in one direction on the sandpaper, not back and forth, just in one direction, to slightly sand the edge of my mat board. Then I'm going to take my drawer construction and center it on the back of piece U so that it is as centered as possible. Once I like how it's fitting, I'm going to glue my drawer construction to the drawer front and let it dry. Once it's dry, it should fit in the opening. If need be, you can slightly sand the drawer or the drawer opening if you feel like it's not fitting just right. You now need to remove pieces T, W, V, and X. These are going to be the stove doors. You also need to find the four very small magnets that are in your accessory bag. These are not connected, but the magnets are strong enough. You may have a bit of difficulty getting them apart. Once you get them apart, set them on their respective doors. If you get them too close, they'll go back together. I highly suggest using super glue to install the magnets because if you use a glue that's not strong enough, the magnets may come out of the doors at a later date. Just add a little bit of super glue into the holes first and then push the magnets in with your fingers and you should be ready to go. Do this for all four doors. It's also at this time while the magnets are drying that if you want to sand the edges of the doors, similar to the way I did for the drawer front, this would be a good time to do it before adding anything else to it. Now to add the hinges, they are paper hinges that can be found in the cardstock sheet. Line them up as you see on the screen here so that you are sure which hinge goes with which door. Before we attach them, we actually first need to glue each one of the paper hinges to the material which can be found in your accessory bag. 
add glue to the entire paper hinge just on one side and then glue it firmly to the fabric. Once it's glued down, you can cut it out so that you are cutting exactly on the edge of the hinge. You don't want any fabric sticking out over the edge. This is going to cause your hinges to have a lot more strength and last a lot longer than just paper by itself. Once these are completed, we can now attach them to the back of our door. The back, what I'm calling the back, is the side that has the magnet. You also want to make sure you are gluing it on the side so that your magnet is still visible. Once you know where your hinge is going, make sure to add glue to the fabric side and then glue the fabric to the back of the door. You want to make sure that the fabric is sandwiched in between the mat board door and the paper hinge. This is how they should all look once they are finished. Now, before I move on, I've decided it's a good idea to pre-paint the bulk of your stove body. I'm going to be using this very bright red paint and make sure to remove your drawer so you don't accidentally paint your drawer into the body. Uh, when you're using acrylic paint on mat board, I highly suggest that you do not add water at least to the first coat of acrylic paint because if you do add water, it could cause your mat board to warp. The best thing to do is to just use straight acrylic paint. Now that my first layer has dried, I'm going to bend my hinges so that the paper hinges are at a 90 degree angle. If you do not pre-bend your hinges, you may have a hard time closing your doors once they're installed. Here you can see that I have pre-bent this hinge so that it is at a 90 degree angle and it is turned backwards so that the hinge is bent towards the back of the door. I'm going to do this for each one of my doors. You can also bend it back and forth a few times if you're worried about the hinge working and being smooth. I'm also dry fitting it in place. The magnets will help you know if they're sitting right because they should be magnetized up against the pin now. Before moving forward, I wanted to go ahead and paint my doors. You won't be able to tell very much because I'm painting them white, but putting on an initial coat of paint is a pretty good idea at this point because it can get more difficult once they're glued permanently onto the stove. I have found that you can paint over the magnets themselves and they will still work. However, make sure that your paint is very dry before you put the door onto the piece because if you close that magnet with paint on it and it's not dry, it will come off. All of the doors are installed the same way, so I'm going to show you how to install this big one and then you should be able to do the rest of them in a similar fashion. I made sure that the hinge was laying flat. It's no longer at a 90 degree angle. I centered the door against the bottom and then I'm going to add glue just to the brown fabric that is showing. I'm going to add glue to the entire piece of fabric, making sure I do not get any glue on the bottom of the white door that you see. If I get glue on there, it could glue itself to the stove. I wanna push the door up against the bottom of the stove and then push the paper down so that it's centered within the opening. That glue is going to adhere to the interior of the stove, creating the hinge. I'm not going to close it at this time. I want it to stay open and allow that glue time to dry. I have done that for each of these three openings. Depending on the glue you are using, it might be a good idea to leave these to dry overnight. For piece X, which is the final door, it's going to be installed in the opposite direction. This is why we put piece GG up inside this area. The hinge is actually going to be glued to that piece. I do it the same exact way where I made the hinge not be bent. I made it straight, pushed it inside, and I'm using a pencil eraser because it's easier to get the pencil eraser in there than my finger. I'm just pressing the hinge in and allowing it to dry with the door open. Now I'm inserting my drawer just to see how it looks. While everything is finished drying, I can work on the legs of my stove. Each leg is going to consist of a Y piece and a Z piece. 
you simply glue Z to the back of Y at a 90 degree angle so that you have a leg that looks like this. They can be glued right at the edge of the stove or you can inset them a little bit. It's all up to how you want them to look. You should make four of these and glue them onto each corner of your stove. Now we're going to work on cardstock pieces one through seven. The rectangles at the bottom are all going to be decoration for the doors and the two pieces left at the top are going to go on the stove top itself. These pieces are optional, but if you do want to use them, I am first laying them out, dry fitting them to the pieces, making sure that they look how they were originally planned to look. There's a little bit of space at the bottom and they are pushed towards the top to have an even border around three sides. And of course, X is not staying on there because it's at an angle. I'm using tacky glue to put them on, making sure that the glue is as even as possible on the back so that there's no bubbling later on when I paint over it. I'm now installing the piece that goes on the top of the stove. This is supposed to look like extra burners, I think, with like a cover on it. And so it just gives a little extra vintage detail to the top. Before installing the rectangle piece, I am gluing the two circle pieces on top. And once those are on in the correct places, I'm just going to glue the entire rectangle piece on top of the stove top. And when I paint it, it will leave a nice detailed edge. To create the burners that go on top of the stove top, you are going to need these eight cut pieces and you're going to glue two of them together so that in the end you end up with four pieces that are a double thickness. I found the easiest way to do this is to use a toothpick with a little bit of glue and add the glue and then put the other piece on top trying to line it up as best as possible. If you would like to add further detail, there are eight tiny rectangles that you can glue on top of the burner pieces. Again, this is just an extra level of detail and not necessary. You can see the difference between the one on the left and the one on the right. Before gluing your burners to the top of the stove top, I highly suggest that you paint your stove top first and you also paint your burners before you attach them. This will make it much easier for you to have crisp, clean paint lines. Then all you have to do is add glue to the back of the burners and line them up with the circle openings in the stove top. And this is what you have. I'm going to be aging my stove slightly because this is supposed to be a vintage stove. I am using shaved chalk pastel, which has been one of my favorite ways to age things recently. I'm adding a little bit of light brown, and then I'm also adding some black around the door openings because I feel like there would be a lot of wear around those openings. If you do use chalk pastel like I do, make sure you put a coating on top of it. I'm using a gloss one because this is supposed to be a metal piece of furniture. To create the handles for all the doors, you are going to need these six pieces from your cardstock sheet to create one handle. Again, the best way I've found to do this is to use glue on a toothpick, add glue, and then you're going to put one long piece on top of the other long piece line up the edges so that you have a double thickness of the long pieces. I'm also going to add the short pieces to either end, making sure to line up the edges. Once I have two pieces on one side, I'm going to flip it over and add the other two pieces to the other side of the handle. This is making a quadruple thickness on either end. I'm making five of these handles for the stove. As you can see, I did a primer coat on the handles. I'm leaving those up at the top, but we might as well glue together the grates for the stove at this time as well. 
So you are going to glue the grates together using the same method of a toothpick with glue and then glue the two pieces together. Once those are glued together, you want to add one line down the center and add one more piece of cardstock. This helps give a little bit extra support to the center, but honestly, these are mostly for looks. If you actually want to put miniature food on them or have any kind of strength in them, I highly suggest you coat them with super glue or you add a paper clip, like a bit of paper clip along the center instead of this piece of paper because that will give your grate more strength to actually hold food. So those are a few options if you want to make these actually functional in that way. The handles, they are just bent in a way so that they look like handles. I know it's kind of hard to see at this moment, it got fuzzy, but I'm bending them like this so that they will be flat against the stove doors once they are installed. And you just push them again, add some glue and put them onto the door. And then I uh, just put a little bit of silver paint on top of them. I also realized I forgot to film this part because you don't glue anything in, but the way you install the grates for the stove is they just sit on top of the double E pieces that are inside the large opening on the left and the largest opening on the right. You may have to turn them at an angle to get them into the stove. Uh, you can glue them down if you want them in there permanently, or you can leave them loose. There are two ways that you can create the handles or knobs for the stove. The original way I did it looks more like levers and this is more of a retro look to the stove. I will show you how to create those, but there's also another way you can make more modern looking knobs. To create the handles, all you need to do is take the paper clip from your accessory bag, but you have to also have access to a hot glue gun and some wire cutters and benders. You're going to make a bend, a small bend in the paper clip and then cut off a small piece just past the bend so you have a piece that looks like this. Hold that piece in a pair of pliers or tweezers so you don't burn your hand and then insert it into the end of the glue gun until you have a small bulb on the end of the wire. You can actually continue to do this, insert it into the glue gun until you are happy with the size and shape of the bulb on the end of the wire. Once you're happy with what you have, you can paint it with some acrylic paint so it looks like a handle with a bulb on the end. After that, all you have to do is insert it into the holes that are pre-made in piece S at the front of the stovetop and glue those in so that they stay in place. In order to create the more modern knobs in your kit, you have 14 small circles. And instead of creating them with a bent piece of wire, you need one straight piece of wire. This one is about a quarter inch long. Take two of those pieces and glue them together so you have a double thickness. You should create seven of these double thicknesses. I'm doing this the same way I've done some of my other pieces by adding glue with a toothpick and then gluing the other piece on top. The easiest way to install the wires so that it holds immediately is by using some gel super glue. You want to add tacky glue to the back of the circle. And again, you can just do this with a toothpick. And then you want to take the wire piece in a pair of pliers and dip it into the gel super glue. Then you can take that wire piece and stick it onto the back of the circle where the tacky glue is. And they should make somewhat of an immediate bond so you don't have to worry about the wire moving over. You can mess with it just a little bit while it dries, but that will help you not be as frustrated with the process of putting them together. Once you have seven of these, all you have to do is put a little bit of glue into the holes provided on piece S and then install each handle into the hole. I installed mine first and painted them later, but you can always paint them before you install them, whatever you're most comfortable with. I added silver on mine so they blended in a little bit more with the handles. 
The very last step is to create the gas pipe. For this, you will need two cotton swabs from your accessory bag and the two rectangles marked with a number eight from your cardstock sheet. You will also need a thing of water and to cut the heads off your cotton swab. After the heads are removed, all you're going to do is put one of the cotton swab sticks into some water for about 10 to 20 seconds. You don't want to do it too long because then the paper on the cotton swab will start to unravel. Once it's soaked, you want to carefully and slowly bend it into an L shape and then let it dry. After it's dry, you can paint it whatever color you want. I did everything in a silver so it looks like a metal pipe and brackets. This piece is going to go on this side of the stove and to begin laying out what it's going to look like, I'm going to lay the straight piece of the pipe up underneath the stove top and then mark where I want to cut it off. I highly suggest you watch this whole section before trying this so you know how it looks in the end. Then I'm going to line up my L-shaped pipe at the bottom and this is eventually going to be covered up with a bracket but I do feel like I need to cut it a little bit more so that the bend fits perfectly at the bottom of the stove. Once I'm happy with how everything is laying out, I'm going to go ahead and use super glue to glue it down. You can also use tacky glue, but I was wanting everything to move pretty quickly at this point, so I just used super glue. I'm going to take one of the rectangles that were marked with an eight, and I'm going to push it over the top of the pipe so that I get a bracket shape once I push down on either side. This is going to be lined up at the top where the pipe is entering the bottom of the stovetop. This is to cover up that there's not actually a real connection at that point. I'm going to glue it down and then push the sides down so it looks like a bracket. Now I've added glue to the L-shaped piece and I am gluing that just underneath the straight piece. I'm going to create another bracket doing the same thing where I push down on either side. And then I'm going to add this on top of the connection point between the two cotton swab sticks so that now it looks like one long pipe piece. One thing I like to do when I create brackets is to use a sharp tool, push into the paper, and it looks like there are little nail or screw marks in the paper. The last thing we have to do is glue the end of the pipe just underneath the stove so it disappears once it is sitting in place. I use a hot glue gun to do that. And that's it. That is the end of creating our stove. This is the original stove I created on my main channel and the red one is the kit with the working doors which if you ordered the kit is what you received. If you're interested in ordering a kit like this, you can find the link to my website which has my shop in the description of this video. Thank you for watching. Bye.